platooned the runaway rock hype train, the only wrestler who turned roid freak after the fucking ring and currently Hollywood's highest paid actor. Really? Can I see his fucking pay stubs? Because Jack Nicholson was the highest paid actor and proved it, and he hasn't done a film in 12 fucking years because he's Biden caliber demented and because he doesn't fucking have to. Meanwhile, The Rock said yes to Tooth Fairy, Skyscraper, and Fast and Furious 57. The only thing more cringe than his politics is his fucking filmography. But in the squared circle, Rocky Johnson's seedling had an eternal rival in the rattlesnake, Stone Cold Steve Austin. But while Austin went over all but one time the two fucking faced, The Rock beats him like a government mule at the movies. But I'll tell you a little secret, Razor Force. Of the two, in terms of testosterific one-liner lob and explosion riddled outright action movie-ass kickery, Stone Cold Steve Austin, give or take a directed DVD shit pile or 12, has quietly accrued one of the more underrated two-fisted finger flipping filmographies in the entire action genre. And folks, The Rock don't come anywhere fucking close. I said what I fucking said. We open on an idyllic setting, the U.S.-Mexico border, a pastoral, placid environment where Kamala Harris effortlessly manages a crisis she assured us for five years does not exist. No. <laughs> The bad news, it's the border. The badass news, the Border Patrol is Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> Now you know how Mexico got that way, but oh, he ain't alone. Speaking of promotion, uh, congratulations, big dog. You son of a bitch, a watch. Not just any watch, too. The band alone can be unraveled and used in case of emergencies. What kind of emergencies? Oh, like. When you're at your new job, at your new desk, and you're watching all the minutes tick by, tick, 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 and you're saying to yourself, I want to hang myself from boredom. That's when you can use it. Sweet, I can count down the minutes until your burial. 27, come in, over. We got you 27, over. Requesting backup. 10-4, we have your uh, position via GPS. Sending units Lima and Bravo. 10-4, thanks. Don't call for backup to help us clear an empty trailer. What? Why would you do that? Shit. I'm going. Oh, hold on. I don't know shit about what's going on inside that place. Jimmy, it's probably empty. Look. Let's just move on. It's a cakewalk. It'll be easy. I mean, I'm just your aging avuncular partner in the opening act of an action film. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> Spaghetti and if you're ready for Austin to avenge his partner, give me a hell yeah! Unfortunately for the home viewing audience, Austin jobs to no man, ask Brock fucking Lesnar. Unfortunately for Austin, it ain't a douchebag who wrestles in fucking swim trunks this prick is packing in his dickies. I never forget a face, amigo. Hey, on, amigo. <laughs> oh. Oh. I know where you live now. Is that your daughter? I'm gonna pay her a visit after I kill you. Confronted with thinly veiled rape threats at his only abiding flesh and blood, does Austin A. Stun his ass and drink beer to a bad disturbed song, B. Beat his wife for unrelated reasons, or C. Hook a brother up for at least making a valiant effort. Make your selections. Nah, hell, it's D. Shout fuck you and kill his shitbag with his brain. Yeah, fuck you. Desperate, wounded, and lacking a soup strainer to put his fucking partner through, Austin reluctantly alights the premises. At which point we are confronted with the 15th rule of action cinema. Any room, building, or butt-fucking vehicle the protagonist departs must, by law, immediately explode like an Oklahoma federal building.
We transition to Austin waking up in a far more idyllic environment. The cool forest bed sprawls beneath him. Birds chirp. Black bears dine on douchey hippie conservationists. Yes, it's a land of milk and honey up in the... Pacific Northwest? God damn it, Austin! What'd you go there for? A renewable source of Twilight vampires and Trotskyism? Yet with a quality setup and more film cliches than a box of Kojima scripts, I can only imagine what manner of cinematic masterpiece we're about to Fuck me, they're using papyrus font. Jesus, Jimmy Crack Corn Christ. I would have settled for Comic Sans for Christ's sake. Nothing says action aplenty like the font every junior high hardcore band uses for their fucking demo tape. I think about it every time I see papyrus. Okay, where else do you even see this font? Hookah bars, Shakira merch, <laughs> off brand tees. Fucking papyrus? Why don't you scrawl the words Redbox exclusive across the bottom third, Austin? Jim Rhodes, that's Austin's name in the movie, by the way, for all the fuck it matters, camps out under the open sky, securing his camouflage fud wear. Fuck, if we can get army rations and a fucking farming tutorial in here, we could start a million sub YouTube prepper channel. And hey, here's a great goddamn idea. Let's watch the dude who wrestled in two knee braces bumblefuck his bow-legged ass about the rocky, mountainous terrain, culminating in an early morning kill of a CGI deer reflected in his eyes because who the hell wants to pay for a fucking animal wrangler? And speaking of animals, we then transition to a new locale. When the Vegas nickel slots are too damn pricey, when you've played more slapjack than blackjack, when even the porno pamphlet people recoil in disgust, and every employee at the Bunny Ranch has a restraining order, there can be but one answer. Everyone's favorite consolation prize, the city that put the laugh in Laughlin, fuck! In Reno, folks, wherein we exchange papyrus font for Times New Roman, while the Jamie Kennedy value model indulges in leet uber hacks, and you know the hacks are leet because he's wearing Walmart sunglasses and fingerless fucking mittens. But like all proxy humping hacksaws, he's also an aspiring VTuber. Four twenty. This is Northwest Dispatch. Ten nineteen. Repeat. Ten nineteen. Northwest Dispatch. This is Charlie. Four twenty eight. Can you repeat? Ten nineteen. Four twenty eight. Ten nineteen. Four twenty eight. Disregard pursuit and return to station until advised further. Copy. Northwest Dispatch. Four twenty eight is ten nineteen. All clear. My voice jamming worked perfectly. We will be on our way to California before they even realize what we just pulled off. Heading to California with millions in bearer bonds steady on there, Monopoly man. You could almost afford a month's rent in a one-bedroom apartment in San Francisco. Unfortunately, Cyber Cliche is fixing to be upstaged by Doc Mitchell from Fallout New Vegas. Enough. You did good, Gary, all right? Thank you very much, Mr. Lost. And the only thing Doc Mitchell loves more than fish and shrapnel out of the new Vegas courier's cranium is plowing prostitutes. You've got what's most valuable to me right here. Sounds like you love me, baby. Mm hmm. Well, you're gonna find out how much I love you. Yo, Jensen. We to get a room? <laughs> Where? The convalescent home? This dude is so old, the only contraceptive he needs is nudity. But I wouldn't check the nightstand for your pussy payola, sweetie, because your steady fella prefers to pay in suitcase nukes. Oh, oh shit. shit. Those aren't bonds. The fuck? That's a bomb. Gary, give me a knife. What are you going to do with it? OK. Don't ring. Don't ring, don't ring. Surprise. That's right. We're still here. So you know what that means, don't you? You're dead, motherfucker. Dead. And these extended car warranty calls get weirder and weirder. Hey. Hey. What are you gonna do about it? To hold a fruitless two-year-long investigation into who planted the bomb before quietly sweeping it under the rug and blaming MAGA hat-wearing motherfuckers instead. Gotta get that motherfucker. 
My dude, osteoporosis and prostate cancer is going to get that motherfucker. Give it 15 minutes. He'll be dead, buried, and an enthusiastic Democrat. Unfortunately for the doc, he's being tracked. And for once, it isn't by TikTok. And so as he flees to the mountains of Northern California, <clears throat> Montana, where teenage cliche clashes with Cabela's boomer dad cliche. Heaven or hell, duel one, let's schlock. Wait a second, I thought we were going hiking. Dad, I'm just going over to Megan's to help her pack for the trip of a lifetime. That I'm not going on, by the way. We've got two weeks of winter break to bond. Two long weeks. We're not even vaguely related. Of course, if her story sounds unconvincing enough to be a modern WWE storyline, Vince Russo did nothing wrong, it's only because she's full of seven shades of shit. I got Kim down here. What'd she do this time? Cheryl caught her shoplifting again. A shame she didn't steal a redeeming character trait. But before Blandy Griffith can take her to the fishing hole, the antagonists of the film elect to keep the lowest profile possible by kicking in the door of the fucking police station and immediately taking hostages. And like Undertaker strapping Stephanie to a fucking cross, I think we all know who's about to show up next. Sure, sugar tits, hold Stone Cold Steve Austin at gunpoint. Seem to work out swimmingly for Brian Pillman. Press your ear to his tombstone and ask him. But when Blandy gets his brains turned into Texas chili, the thugs outside decide to get proactive. This is taking too fucking long. How am I doing? Should do some more. Fuck, man! You think I can't break his neck and shoot you at the same time? Good one, Austin. Who'd you get that one from? Owen Hart? Austin turns the tables so he can put the fucker through one, but unfortunately for our intrepid hero, nondescript thug number 571 has the trigger discipline of Alec Baldwin. Don't make me kill you. You can't kill me. See, I'm one step ahead of you, crap. Five steps ahead of you, you stupid motherfucker. You think I'd let you carry a loaded gun after what you did? Whatever. And that depends. Is he from the Ukraine? Unfortunately, it turns out Austin ain't as able at a hostage negotiation as he is at Zamboni driving. What about the girl? She'll just slow us down. Let's leave her here. The girl, she's gonna come with us, because God forbid you fuck us over in the forest. Her blood will be on your hands. Can you dig it? You sucker! You sucker! <laughs> What? They strap on the hiking boots and head out for some fresh air while nondescript black henchman practices his best Joe Biden breathing exercises. <laughs> you smell good, girl. Mmm, you smell good. Is that pert? It's pert, right? Dom, <sighs> tie her up. Whoa there, BTK! I said Biden, not Polanski. Is that necessary? Oh, yeah, I, I think that's pretty necessary. But don't worry, Dom. Dom has a lot of experience tying people up, isn't that right, Dom? <laughs> she used to bang David Carradine. I knew this would take so long, I'd have put on a TV. But while we suppress a vomitous wretch, the hired goons indulge in some dissension in the Riri ranks. Oh, fuck, this pack is heavy. You're such a tosser, Geary. Oh, fuck you, you limey asshole. Whinge, whinge, whinge. Oh, this is bullshit. You know, you might want to shut your gob, but I'm going to do it for you. My gob, what, what, what's a gob? Oh, you tosser, saying crumpet soccer hooligans, Brexit, tooth decay, fucking fish and chips, mate. Can you guess what country I'm from, love? S Star Wars? Yes, I know it's Gary Daniels. Yes, I know he's actually English, but someone forgot to tell his dialogue. Interrupting their retarded reveries, Stone Cold suggests they get the group and the plot to fucking move. We need to get moving. I don't think you want a family hikers find us all here. Now I'm just taking a wild stab, but I'm guessing we're going this way. Get off the road! And if you love a good hiking montage, good granola chomping fuck, are you ever gonna enjoy this film? Told you the weather changes on a dime. It's gonna slow us down. 
Then it'll slow down our friend as well. Yeah, him and our fucking film. After a cozy father-daughter chat, the hooker takes the teeny bopper to take a wee. Unfortunately, the moment Austin takes his eyes off his henchman friend, he learns that despite making up just 12% of the forest population... <laughs> You know, you really know how to crash a party mountain, man. You wait your fucking turn. <laughs> 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 What the hell is going on here? He had his hands on the girl. So, what business is it of yours where he puts his hands? Hey, beating women is my job. Dominica, did he... Did he hurt you? I see. Crap. Did you fuck up again? Hey. Say it. You fucked up. I fucked. I fucked up, man. Problem solved. Next! Daddy! Daddy? Oh. oh, that's beautiful. She's your daughter. It's not what it looks like. She, she's my girlfriend. We're into kinky shit. If I have to help you people, so be it. But the next person that touches my daughter is dead. From here, the film establishes the following formula. Hiking montage, escape attempt. Hiking montage, escape attempt. Each culminating in ever more insistent assertions that Austin will... I will hunt your ass down. And kill me. Yeah. Yeah, I saw the movie title too. And all the while, Widow's Peak and the Shitbag Syndicate are on the verge of murdering the merry fuck out of one another. But before the movie can meander into narrative oblivion, they step in a pile of shitbag. Oh, shit. Jeez, Walt. You know this guy? Yeah, I work with him. Not anymore, you don't. Turns out Doc Mitchell met with one of Austin's fellow Border Patrol agents in hopes he could escape to Canada, I assume to find the rest of his accent. But when the deal went south, he blew his buddy's brains out, who returned the favor by liquefying his fucking thigh. Hey, Lawson. Don't bother getting up. Son of a bitch! Nice to see you too, honey. Where's your fucking money, Lawson? Gone. History. Figure I ain't gonna make it. And if I can't have it, you sure as hell can't. Now if I know anything about women who fuck for money, and I've seen plenty of the Kardashians, she'll take news of her financial reversals as peacefully and placidly as a rolling mountain spring. <laughs> And then she spots it, cradled at the bottom of the canyon, the bankroll of a lifetime, millions in bearer bonds to piss away on a car, a house, or one and a half orders from Uber Eats. Unfortunately for the fuckbags in question, not to mention anyone pining for the plot to move forward, it's at the bottom of the slope that looks like our fucking inflation rate. With endless options for retrieval from a physically fit hooker to a physically fit English git, they naturally select the ideal physical specimen to send down. The oldest motherfucker present with a surgically repaired neck and two bionic fucking knees. Let's goddamn do this! But first, it's time to negotiate the Stone Cold Steve Austin way. I'll get it. He's gonna get it. What? On one condition. Oh yeah, what's that? You want part of the cut? I'll go down there and get the money. But you're not getting it back until you let my daughter go. Well, I'll tell you what, partner. Why don't you go down there and get the money? Then we'll talk about it. Which is to say, stare blankly in boomer bemusement and apply no pressure whatsoever to achieve your daughter's release before you indulge in a death-defying, repelling excursion suspended by a length of fucking dental floss. And speaking of which, you remember that pointless plot detour about the goofy fucking rope watch the camera needlessly lingered on at the outset of the film? Oh man, that is cool. I think I'm gonna have to have that watch. I don't think so. Hey, sorry, buddy. You'll have to pay fifteen ninety five for the Bud K catalog like the rest of it. I'm not negotiating. Don't get too attached to it. 
And if the hiking montage has propelled your penis to jolly green giant heights, just you wait for the sublime state of engorgement achieved by a fucking repelling montage. Filmmakers do not fucking skimp. Nearly a full five minutes of movie runtime is devoted to watching a bald redneck bungee fucking his way down a length of fishing twine to grab a girl's gym bag, pause for a cigarette and a shit, and shimmy his way back up. Five full minutes! And of course, having clambered his way back up the cliff, cash in hand, his reward will be an immediate negotiation concerning his daughter's really Life is like a carton of milk. Everybody's got an expiration date. <laughs> Now I know he got that from Owen Hart. And this, my friends, is when Austin lapses into full fuck deficit. Brace your buttholes, Razor Force, for what has to be the finest gearing the fuck up montage since Predator. <laughs> But the pedo ship is breaking, Glandolf. When Jamie Kennedy slaps an underage girl, she beats the monster energy out of his ass. But when the peroxide prostitute witnesses the act, she handles it in as even-tempered a manner as humanly possible by shattering his shins to a fine powder. Yeah! <laughs> oh. All alone, dehydrated, survival instincts of a smack-addicted grunge singer? Oh, this fella's gonna be just fine. Why are you doing this? I had to put a pen in your enthusiasm. <gasps> Lost and took off with the money, all right? We didn't think that far ahead. Man, they just left you behind. Yeah, yeah. I told them I was going to catch up. Yeah, about that. Yeah. Catch. <laughs> And if you've been asking yourself why Austin appeared so passive to this point, perhaps owing to the imprisonment of his child, good goddamn news, folks. With his chest cavity ventilated, his survival watch from fucking Big Five stolen, and his only child bound and beaten between this and the state of his scalp, Stone Cold officially has nothing more to lose. He stalks these shit heels like a wolf on open prairie. Blimey McKidney Pie stops for a smoke, securing the delusion that the coast is clear. But bitch, Austin is the fucking forest. But sadly, his backpack's filled with English food. They throw hands, they throw feet. For a moment, it looks like the red coat may massacre the redneck. But in the immortal words of the Texas rattlesnake himself, I got two words for you. <laughs> hey, this he's guy knows what stick. he's doing. He's got the stick. 
He has got the stick. That's how you do it. You got to sneak in sound bites. Like you speak in sound bites, and that's all you need to do. They flip, they kick. It is both barn burner and slobber knocker simultaneously. But like the reincarnation of the 80s action star that Austin is, you know it can end but one way with a world class one liner. <laughs> Sorry, I can't stick around. Of course, it isn't long before they notice the group's dental hygiene has improved 11-fold and take note of their monarch cuck pal's disappearance. But as they soldier on up the icy slopes, heedless of their peripheral vision, it ain't long before Austin appears. You know, if the antagonist has been jonesing to penetrate some hookers all fucking film, I've got good news and goddamn great news. Thanks. What? Sick! A stick! Ah. Oh impaling a prostitute in front of your only daughter. Remember, kids, it's never too early to fill out your ballots for father of the fucking year. Advantage with a high ground and gaining on his opponent, Austin does what he does best in this situation. Get shot and fall off a fucking cliff. <laughs> it's fine, he'll shake off the bullet wound the best way there is. A brisk fucking run in a mountainous environment. But wherever you find Canadian mountains, you find Canadian Mounties. <laughs> found Canadian Mounties. But before they can apologize in unison for blocking the path of his bullets, he brains the broad, hijacks a vehicle, and wait, you're gonna race a redneck on an ATV? Well shit, challenge Aquaman to a water polo match while you're at it. Austin emerges from the underbrush, gunshot wound magically healed, and directs his daughter to go find some socialistic help while Austin drives off to turn a walk-in widow's peak into poutine. But by the time Austin closes distance, he comes face to facial injury with an old friend. Your favorite, my favorite, the home viewing audience's favorite. Stick! 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 Forehead bolts away at Biden velocity and makes for the most strategically defensible location available. A boarded up train tunnel with no visible fucking exit. Wait, did I say boards? I meant splintered shards of shattered lumber. Oh yeah! Austin shock masters his ass into the train tunnel, tackles his quarry, and from that point forward appears to do everything in his power to turn a slam dunk fight against a dude with a dad bod into a genuine physical altercation. Oh. Look at this! And a close line from hell! Stick! 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 With dude done decapitated with a shovel, it seems Austin is all set to sail off into the sunset. But like all modern wrestling matches, you know this shit'll have at least one false finish. <laughs> Wait, did this dude just do the job to gravity? Uh, fair enough, you can see what it did to Nikki Cox. Now, Austin being the reincarnation of the 80s action hero, we've had some fine fucking one-liners to date, but a solemn, somewhat ambiguous ending such as this calls for a more painterly approach. Something simple, almost Shakespearean, something like... Yeah, fuck you. Ah, it's a thing of beauty, ain't it? He pinches his partner's watch, heads out to greet his daughter, who, like most women, refused to seek fucking help. And hey, what was that I said about false fucking finishes? No, no! I'm back. I might want to step back. You think I'd let you take my money? Cling fast to your Steve Weiser Razor Force. This is going to be every bit as amazing as it is for goddamn ridiculous. You can't kill me! When I hunt, I hunt to kill. Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! Oh, fuck. No! A fine fucking finish, but I can't help but feel there's some manner of pugilist poetry missing from the formula. Something fiery, fucking explosive even.